Welcome to Simply Walk the Talk. Our bodies and minds adapt to what we do most of the time. If you want to change your body and mind, you must change what it is you do most of the time. This podcast explores all things health, wellness, fitness, lifestyle, and biohacking. Stay tuned as we explore various thoughts, methods, and experiences from a multitude of conversations between our interesting guests and experts through many fields of work. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Simply walk the Simply walk the What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another awesome show of Simply Walk the Talk. I am your host, Joshua J. Holland, and today we're going to get deep into the science. We're going to get esoteric. We're going to talk about energy and and the, the, the visuals of all things science in the quantum field. It's going to be fascinating. If you've ever wanted to kind of hear what it's about to like to actually see energy fields and and work within energy fields and have those translate into products and you know things that you can actually wear and things you can put your body parts into yes body parts um then you definitely want to continue listening to this show uh i have a wonderful guest on the show he is the founder and ceo at leela quantum tech tech which is uh leela spelled l-e-e-l-a and his name is Mr. Philip Samor von Holzendorf Feeling. <laughs> I hope I did not butcher that. But um, Philip is a coach, a conscious entrepreneur, and energy healer. In parallel to a successful international business career, he constantly worked through blockages and barriers that prevented him from truly connecting with his true self. With that, he started to also see energy fields and developed his unique skills as a healer. And he went through two decades of training in shamanic and other energy healing practices. During his business career, he worked as an executive for several well-known companies, including T-Mobile International and T-Mobile US, where he served as vice president. So everyone, please help me welcome Mr. Felix, Phil, Philip. Sorry, I'm, I'm confusing the Philip with the feeling, but Mr. Philip, I'm just going to call you Mr. Philip. So help, help me welcome him to the show. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, Josh, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be fun. Yeah, um, you know, we we had tried to, to get on the show um, before the end of the year, and it's been just, it's been busy, I'm sure, for you as it has been for me. Um, but I'm glad that we finally got this scheduled. And I had an opportunity, I guess that allowed me to to dive into more about you, more about your company. Um, and so I think because this is going to get, very deep in thought. Um, I think it's going to challenge some of the the thoughts and ideologies of a lot of people listening and watching. I think maybe let's just start with your background. And then I want to transition into explaining everything at a very third grade or sort of dumbed down version of all of this, this, this fancy talk. Okay. <laughs> I will, I will try my best. All right. All right. So yeah, tell me a little bit more about your background. How did you get into what you what you what you're doing today? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. And what I'm doing today is really just the almost the end of the story of my prior life. It really is because a lot of and that that sounds totally normal because that's the same for almost everybody, right? That it exactly lines up. But I can literally see the different dots and the different things I've done in my life and ran into that culminated to really where I'm at today. And it's, so I'm grateful. I'm very grateful for all the things, even the quote unquote negative or difficult and challenging things in my life. I, you know, as a child, I, you know, was like any normal child, pretty much. I didn't know anything about the energies and stuff like that. Grew up in Germany, by the way. And then I started to get into a, a business career. Uh, and I had, you know, I can say that pretty much forgotten who I am and was sort of reduced to this. Okay, so I'm like this physical body and, you know, you know, going to do the work and, you know, have my regular desires that you have as a human and 
and go work for it and do that and all that. So like most everybody else, really. Um, however, at some point, I realized that there's so much more to that and that there's something behind all of this facade, if you will, and the surface that is so much deeper. And um, I started to be interested in it. So I started to read a few books and started to do a little bit of yoga, a little bit of meditation. And, you know, I don't know. And, and then, you know, you have some of these coincidences. There are no coincidences, but I still call them that. And, and you meet some people. And I started to you know, book a couple of courses, actually, I got interested in the, the shamanic work, for example, and into what the chakras are about and all that. And all in parallel to this, you know, business work. And then in 2005, I met my wife, my now wife, and she actually was born with the ability to see energy fields, to see aura of people and everything. And she never had lost this conscious connection of you know what's behind that and she was always able to see the quote unquote unseen you know whatever mm -hmm. is behind it like people could say lies and she would know exactly that they were lying it's just one of those examples right and uh, that people may be able to relate to and so that catapulted me and my efforts to kind of find myself again and to kind of open up this you know what's behind the, the surface and helped me quite a bit. So and I kept doing, you know, these practices, went through shamanic workshops. I learned how to do past life regression work. You know, I first did a lot of that myself to clean up my own stuff, but then I learned really how to do that with others. And yeah, a lot of those um, uh, works. And yeah, in, in the corporate world though, I, I couldn't really talk about that because, you know, I, I was really operating on an executive level and, and that's just a world, it, it's connected from that, right? You you are in your brain and you, you're very rational and you need to manage and you need to get stuff done and be very efficient. It's very contrary to this creative self that's so ex expansive and that, you know, that can just be and just, be be great with that right just be and 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 in this other world you always have to do you always have to achieve you always have to perform and you have to get it done yesterday right and i was able to do that and and i i tried to let this other part of me really get into that and and try to be you know a, a good human also in in that regard and try to do things also a little bit from the heart more and more you know infuse love into the corporate world, if you will. And in 2016, I wasn't able to do that anymore because I, I had reached a point where I just had to be myself all the time and fully and, and mm -hmm. live from within. And, and that's when I left the corporate world. And from that point on, I only did things that really were my calling and certain things that happened over time. My wife actually had been diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease at some point mm. when we still lived in Germany. And then in 2010, we moved to the US all together with our kids and she was still doing very bad. And that kind of triggered me to find my passion for alternative healing solutions. And you know, it could be anything, it could be certain supplements that I uh, picked out, or it could be some amazing alternative doctor like uh, Dr. Klinghardt in the, you know, in the Seattle area, for example, and all that. And I learned so much and it was great. And at some point, actually my wife, uh, she, she certainly has her own abilities because she, she's working as a, as a healer and as a coach, but the disease was something for her to learn. And it was an opportunity for me to actually get into this, what I'm in today. And she, by the way, chronic Lyme disease, they say you can't heal it. She doesn't have it anymore. She completely got over it. No symptoms left. No, no, nothing uh, just for anybody uh, to know. And yeah, so at some point I founded a supplement company that's dealing with carbon 60, which is a very, very interesting molecule um, and quite fascinating, really not mainstream, but, but, but really cool. And the quantum energy uh, field, which is not quantum mechanics. Like I'm not talking quantum mechanics here. I'm rather talking ether. Um, uh, and we still call it quantum energy because 
you know, what are words, right? It, it depends on how we define them. Um, anyway, I got into that because of my healing journey and through all my work, I, I mean, I, I knew, you know, distant healing is possible. All these things exist, like there are auras, you know, there's more than just the physical bodies. I mean, I know that it's not a belief or something, I, I know it. Um, and, uh, you know, at, at some point we realized we can combine, you know, healing work with products. And, and help people, you know, actually raise their consciousness level on one end, but also kind of charge up their batteries, if you will, on a different level. And yeah, so that got me here. It's, it's really, it's somewhat of a calling. And we work together with actually a network of quite amazing healers, really top-notch healers uh, from across the globe that help us to develop the product. And I know this may sound a little woo-woo to some people, <laughs> but I tell you, yes, there's some woo-woo, but there's a lot of science also. So it's really the full spectrum of it. And I tell you, that's the most fun and most wonderful thing actually here doing this whole thing, because I see people that never thought, you know, that some of these things are possible and they suddenly see it's possible and they open up to themselves, to their inner power and all of that. And that's, that makes my day, you know, that's, then, then I, I have a great day when I, you know, see or hear something like that. And we try to help with that a little bit. <laughs> and thank you for that. It's, it, it's so well put. And, you know, I, I, I would say that I applaud you for stepping out of the corporate world, the way you did at the level you were at into doing something that, now you see is very, very, um, I guess, validating and, um, you know, you're able to to get something from it. And, and it sounds like it was more beneficial for you than just kind of making the next buck and building the next company and, you know, doing what, whatever. Um, and of course, your entrepreneur, entrepreneur spirit still allowed you to create a business from it. So now you're still kind of in the corporate world, but you're also helping people and healing people. Um, and, you know, it, it's interesting to to say heal or cure, because obviously on uh, in today's world, we have to be very careful when it comes to using those descriptive words. But being like talking about all of this from this energy healing perspective, um, how would you explain what it is you do? Right. So I, I know you're a coach. I know that like, I, I guess let, let me back up. So. Many people listening to the show, I would imagine, have dealt with Lyme disease themselves or know someone that has dealt with it. And it's a very, very common misdiagnosed um, disease or complication within the body. And it's one of those ones that if, if you've dealt with Lyme, chances are you're going to be very much a believer at some point into this woo-woo stuff. <laughs> right. And and what I find fascinating is that I have worked with many people with Lyme disease and there's some that are willing to kind of dive deeper into everything. There's some willing to dive deep into just the, the woo woo science. And then there's some that just dive deep in the Western medicine side of it. Um, regardless of what it is you decide to do, I think when we add in some of the things you're about to talk about, when we add these thing these things in, it's like the collective good. I think it's it's like the transformers. Like if you know you have something else in as an alternative practice, why not add it? Because a lot of these things are synergistic, and it also comes down to the belief. And I'm sure you you can vouch for that. But you know, if we even believe, I uh, forget. I think it's Dr. Bruce Lipton has the book um, The Power of Our Thoughts or something like that, right? And if you just understand that even the thought you thinking something might work is enough to kind of shift that needle in the right direction. And, you know, I, I don't want to get people thinking that I'm saying, Oh, well, I, I think I'm going to be healed. So therefore I'm healed. It's not quite that simple because even that statement is not truly believing it. Right. But then also it's not truly taking action, things that you see in front of you. So how do you explain that? to a third grader? How do you explain that to someone who's super skeptical? Yep, and a, and a third grader may still actually have a lot more connection 
to this and and in understanding from his his or her heart than an adult because you know the longer we live in a very materially oriented world that you know kind of tells us and teaches us that we're reduced to just this physical body and we're mm. you know not connected to anything nor to any body and you know we just need to take these drugs right to be good or to you know and everybody does the same and and we have to follow this certain path right you know we all learn the same stuff in in school and you have to learn it no matter if it's valuable to anything in life you know other than actually starting a career or something like that you know the more we do that the more we tend to forget our true inner nature and power and that that's kind of what we're here for actually it's kind of an interesting thing because it it, it sort of is good that it happens because forgetting yourself makes it possible that you can find yourself again and so, so i would say that we're we're a whole system right and not just a physical body there's something behind the physical body which you could give it different names you know i you could call it consciousness um other people may relate to just the energy behind it you know whatever however you other some other people have different names different descriptions for that but there's something, there's a force behind it. Maybe it's you call it the life force, right? The life force energy. Uh, without that, um, this whole body wouldn't function either, right? So, and and we we need certain things to exist and to exist well. And that's on the on the physical level, it's water, right? You know, we we need some food. I, I would argue that we, you know, there's there's actually some people out there that you know, can just live on water. So, it, you know, there's, we can stretch our minds a little bit, but, you know, in general, you need some good food, you know, and, and it should be good food, not, not poison food. Um, then we, we certainly live in a, like a 5G EMF soup, if you will. That mm -hmm. is, and we have pretty bad food and we have also bad water usually, and, and just a lot of other uh, toxins around, which all puts, pressure on the body and also on the so-called energetic system because we are really energetic beings in a physical body so that is what i what i would tell a third grader you know we're energetic beings in a physical body and how can you find out that i'm telling the truth listen to your heart that's mm. that's what you can do and if you if you don't want to do that you could actually just close your eyes and you can just feel what's there and you 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 will feel at some point and that's what happens in meditation you'll feel this energy within you but you can also feel energy around you and it doesn't need to be like you don't need to see aura or any of these things it's just feel a little bit of this and it, do a movement and it it's more than the body and what is actually moving the body right it's not the body moving the body uh, mm. it's your mind your consciousness moving the body. So those are just some things. And, and we tend to really get out of our own bodies, actually, because this is our reality here. This is our physical existence. And a great way to become very present and to feel that more is just to sit down and feel your body. Just feel your body and be within your body. because And that's such an easy thing to do and we could do that all the time but we don't really do it we are with our thoughts and the next couple of days there's something going on there's something that happened yesterday you know i just saw this guy um doing something in the shop it, you we, we think about all these things that we need to get done oh we need to feed our family so now our thoughts are all over the place and we're not present here in our body if we can learn a little bit more to be present in our body, all these other things will come naturally. And I don't think it's a far-fetched concept for people to understand that we're a little bit more than just a physical body. I think you, you pointed that out very well. And it just to even kind of piggyback on top of that analogy, um, you know, I imagined the, you know, let's say we had two young kids in, in two different rooms and you asked that kid in one room, 
um, or, you know, both kids to, to do exactly what you explained, which was to kind of feel your body, close your eyes, feel your body. You take one room that has nothing in it, as in no lights, no sound, um, all of the senses, we could call it sensory deprivation um, in one room. And then you could have sensory overload in another room with, with you know, everything going on and it's erratic. Um, and ask both of those kids once they come out kind of what was their experience and i think that is a good way to kind of to describe what happens to us as we age because when the kids come out almost regardless of what they say you've got a bunch of people telling them well actually it was this actually it was that and depending on um how confident that young child might be um he or she will either accept that that narrative or will reject it. And I think that's the true essence of being a child and kind of stripping everything back and getting rid of the noise. So I, I love how you pointed that out because my mind immediately goes, aha, that's a really good point. You know, we're constantly being bombarded with the energy of things, whether that's other people, whether that is environmental toxins, whether it's the food that we're eating, but we're being bombarded with energy all the time. And so you can either try to block that or you can try to make your body, your cells become more resilient to that. And, you know, I, I would liken that to wearing armor, you know, and you tell a kid you've got armor, you watch how that kid plays now, right? It's a totally yeah. different thing. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> thank you for that analogy. I think it's re really beautiful. And I hope people who are listening, I hope you're you're bearing with us because we're, we are going to get into the science. And for those who need data, um, just just keep in mind that when you can allow yourself to open your mind, be a little bit more open into these ideas, then imagine the world that you have at your disposal. We're missing out on a lot of what's happening in the world simply because we just don't open our minds. So with that being said, <laughs> um, let, let's talk about sort of where you transitioned. So you, you got to a point where you, you left the corporate world, you, you met your wife, you started to help heal her, work with her on energy healing. Um, and, and I know you mentioned that you have a team of people working with you. At what point did you decide to kind of take this to the next level? Did you see some really good results in your wife and that's when you, you decided to make a business out of it? Or were there other things that happened along the way? How does that look? Yeah, it came in stages and it always came out of this inner knowing. Um, so I can tell you when I started this whole C60, Carbon 60 journey, it was me listening to podcasts and that podcast wasn't even about that at all, like at all. And I was just <laughs> listening to it and I was just getting ready to, to go run some errands. And then they suddenly, this guy brought that up in the, in the interview. And I, my whole system was alert suddenly. And I was like, I need to listen. Like, I literally need to listen now. And it's something important. And I felt this calling. I have something to do with that. I need to do some research on this. So I started doing research on that and all that. I never thought I would do something with it. And and that's, that's you know, long story short, that's how that came about. Same thing here. At some point, I realized the, the, the possibility um, of basically combining what healers can do uh, through distant healing or, or you know, um, it doesn't have to be with distance, right? It can be all from the same room, but yeah. and like it, it's some, some crazy stuff that's, that's possible um, with, with technology and how to, you know, we work with Roman Hafner. I need to mention him, uh, Roman Hafner. He's called the Wunderkind in Europe. So, I need to talk to about him just real quick so people understand like what level we're talking about here. So he was born with the ability to see each and every frequency and vibration, um, uh, even on a completely granular level. Um, and he had to learn the real, the, seeing the matter, you know, like how you would look at your microphone or a chair or a candle. He couldn't see that way because he saw the whole vibration, the heat waves and everything. And he would look at a person, he would see the heartbeat. He could look what the intestines are doing. He could see if, you know, something, what, if there was anxiety in the, in the brain, things like that. 
and he had to learn this physical scene. And over time, as an 11 year old, by the way, he was already on stage in front of 300 people telling them what problems they had and how to solve them and even on a physical level. And so he, he realized he could do that even if someone is across the globe somewhere as an 11 year old. And then doctors called him because they had a lot of cases where they didn't know what to do or you know, either didn't know what they had or they didn't know how to treat them because nothing worked. And then they asked him and he, he could tell them what it is. In many cases, he did the work then. And in other cases, the doctors then came up with the treatment plan, you know, based on what he uh, saw and said. And obviously, over time, he kind of perfected this. Like, he is just absolutely amazing. And we work with him together and with, with how to him, actually, also, a lot of this I, we couldn't have done because it's really his ability with my vision and impulses that we kind of put together certain things. And we were able to create a, a device that concentrates quantum energy, pure quantum energy, or call it ether energy, however you want to call it, um, um, with, with, within these plates. And with that, suddenly, just some amazing things are possible because what we talked earlier about that we need to drink clean water you know to fill up our need for hydration we also need clean energy so so that energy that i'm talking about is the same energy that is within all of our cells so our cells as a matter of fact communicate on that level there's instant communication constantly between the cells and that happens because there's a quantum field within every cell now that same energy is concentrated within these plates therefore it's so harmonious also with the human body or you know with an animal body frankly it doesn't matter even with a plant because it's it's this it's this natural pure quantum energy and with that suddenly so many things open up and i you know, had these ideas that just came out of me on you know what we can do with that and how we can help people with it and and how people may be able to use it and uh yeah, so that that's wow. pretty much how that happened. It and it and it really is, and that's the difference between you know being in the corporate world working for someone. You know, you may work also for a conscious company, but usually you're not. And then it's all about performance and making money, and it's short termism, right? Everything it just is, is relevant what you do this quarter, and 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 you don't care, right? If you make, if, you know, these big companies and corporations, they're there to make a lot of money. And they're owned by financial institutions that only care about money. Okay, so what we're doing is here, that's completely secondary because we we know this is the right thing to do. We have some stuff that can help people, can really help people, can help animals and all that. And that's our driver. You know, we put most of our money into research. We plant a tree in every order that we get we plant a tree um and we help uh some some kids some autistic kids in india that we support and things like that just to do that and and that's really it's that's what i envision as the 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 future also for humanity in a way where people do what's within us what what is their calling because we all have our gifts and we're all so special it's just you know, that we need to find a little bit access to that and then trust if we follow that inner impulse, the right thing will come out of that. But then on a corporate level, you want to see more companies that, that just try to do the right thing, try to do something good. And then if you do that, I mean, yeah, okay, it's, then it's, it's no problem if you make money. It's, you know, I'm not damning that part of it. It's not at all. I mean, money is energy like everything else it just becomes a problem if you're just after that and then also if you're starting to become corrupt because of that because there's just this desire to have more and more and more and you completely lose connection to what's actually good or helpful and i think we're in this time where that is shifting right and it's a right. tough time for humanity to go through this right now but at the at the end of this we're, we're going to come out out of there because that's much more human that's you know what we to be human to have some love to have purpose and to bring in what you have with your own gifts 
and then everything else will follow. You know, uh, that's that's what I think. So I, I, I want to point out uh, some of the, I guess, difficulties for people like like myself or or anyone listening. Um, obviously, I have you on the show, and and it's not a stretch for me to to totally agree with everything you're talking about because I experience it. I have experienced it uh, myself, and also indirectly through various clients and and just kind of being all over. Like I'm, I, I travel a lot, I experience a lot, and I love. I'm such a curious being that I love to try things out. Um, but I, I imagine for you know, let, let's say the entrepreneur out there who's the VC guy or the or, or girl and, um, you know, someone who is into investing in companies and um, there's not a lot you can do with this sort of anecdotal evidence in terms of building a company. So how is it that you got to the point where you could actually build a company from this? Because I imagine you had to show some kind of data, some kind of research. And, and again, not that that is needed to do what you've been doing, but I do think that is needed to run a company, to, to build a company, and then also to get people to want to buy in to that company. So how did, how did, you, how did you cross that hurdle? Yeah, and you're absolutely right. So seers and, and healers and all those people, they can see what our products do instantly. So for those people, obviously, we don't need it. Then you have a lot of people that can actually still sense what the products do right away. Um, so also for those, you don't need any research. But this is something we're, that we want to offer up to to more people, right? And of course, research is important. It's very important. It doesn't help that we know it works. That's good for us to know. But, you know, we then started right away, right away when we had the product done, we went out and did testing. Um, and the way we do it is we give our products to third-party institutes that have nothing to do with us. They're completely independent and said, here, can you test the product? And doctor's offices as well. And and so far now, we've accumulated so much research, so many valuable studies and certificates from three different continents, from from Asia, from Europe, and from the U.S. Um, in very different verticals of testing methods, which is also important. Um, so we're, we did dark field microscopy, which is also called live blood analysis. We can go into that uh, a little uh, deeper in, in a little bit, but um, also HRV, um, and the HRV study, that's the heart rate variability. So the heart rate variability for the listeners that don't know what that is, it's directly connected to the autonomic nervous system. And uh, the heart rate variability can be impacted, for example, by things like 5G or 4G and things like that, and certainly lots of other stuff and, and, and stressors. And but it can also be impacted by uh, positively by our product, uh, and so so can the blood. Uh, the Emoto Institute in Japan uh, has tested our product. So I don't know if anybody has heard about Masaru uh, Emoto. Uh, he's actually very, very famous. Uh, he is the Japanese scientist that was able to prove that you can change the energy in water and, and was able to find a way how to um, visualize that, actually. So what they do is they freeze water and they're able to to show crystals that that are in water. And if you add negative energy to water, then that would also show in, in those crystals. And same thing if you do do the reverse with, with positive energy. And they actually found that our quantum block was able to in, in positively influence water um, faster than anything else they've ever seen within three minutes um, out of just one beautiful crystal that was in the, in the water, in the original water. Um, they had five beautiful crystals after that, which is is a whole lot like they were so impressed they're wanting to bring this to japan now because they, they are just so impressed by it then um there's a, an institute out there in uh, in europe called the basa institute and they do um, biosystem analysis so they measure the cellular voltage and they measure um a lot of other different other things um at the acupuncture points with a 
so-called Decavol method, but it's an advanced Decavol method. Then there's the BioWell. Uh, we had practitioners testing with the BioWell. Yeah, and then several other tests. But I think, and, and all that not enough. Oh, well, by the way, there's a, there's a clinical study being run right now in India with autistic kids. Um, the the study is not finished yet, so we can't share any end results yet. But the midterm results were already fantastic because 70% um, of the participating kids showed significant improvements, and 100% of the kids showed improvements already at the half time of the study. So that's just another angle. But coming back to the dark field microscopy, so we did the first studies there and. And all the results were positive, like literally each and every time. And that the same also with these other studies. It's not that we were shown like 25 or 30 percent success rate, which is already quite phenomenal, right? If you can, you know, positively imp impact that, and it works with a lot of people, great. No, um, this was in 100 percent of the cases. So then I got in contact with Dr. Beverly Rubik here in the U.S., who's an absolute expert uh, in study design, and she's published multiple peer-reviewed studies since three decades, literally. And, and I reached out to her because she had mentioned in an interview that she was very concerned about all the EMF now and the 5G that's coming, even though she, she's very, not, not really like an energy believer, if you will. She's really more on the scientific side, but she was very concerned about it. And um, was shown impact of EMF on the blood, actually. And she, she proved that there's multiple studies that she has uh, published, actually. So I reached out to her and said, we may have a solution here. And, and then she said, well, that's great. Let me look at this. So can you so, show me re your research and everything? And we did that. But she remained completely skeptical and because she thought like a device like this just can't work. Then I, I told her, okay, so... So, uh, yeah, you know, there seems to be evidence there, but I, I don't know if this can really work. And I said, okay, so what do you need uh, for you to say it works? And she said, okay, I would need to run a study. I would need to be the gold standard, either a single blind or a double blind, a randomized sham controlled study. And um, then I said, okay, so how can we do that? Like, you know, and uh, how much would it be? You know, what's the effort? And then she told me that. And then she also said she would start with four test persons. And I was like, four test persons? That doesn't seem like a lot. And she said, you know, my assumption is still it's not working. So I don't want to <laughs> blow your budget. So let's start with four test persons. And if if this works, we're going to expand it. And then we already know the evidence, you know, it works and everything. Then we expand it uh, to a statistical significance. And that's exactly what happened. And after the first study already with the four test persons, it completely reversed. It. Reversed. She had an open mouth and she was like, oh my God, you have a solution for blood clotting. And all the, the problems wow. right now in the world, if you look here to this thing and to that thing, it's all blood clotting. That's the core issue. You, you have the solution for that. And I was like, oh, hold on. You know, like <laughs> I want to be very mindful with that. And I started to put on the brakes. So the, 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 she saw with her own eyes though what was possible and i was like okay so now you know what do you recommend as next step and she said yeah as i had said let's you know expand the study let's do more test persons and all that and we just gotten those results back last week so your listeners are among the first to hear and in a hundred percent of the cases in a hundred percent of the cases 100 percent to actually 150 160 percent of all negative impact of emf was able to be reversed uh, with our quantum block within only 10 minutes. And so she called wow. it stage one and stage two of blood clotting was completely reversed within 10 minutes. And there's more to it. And it's really in, it's a statistical significance. It's, it's sham controlled, randomized. It's really the gold standard. And it's awesome that we can now also show that because it, it you know, gives people really some, some real hard evidence if you know you can look through all the other studies we have hundreds and hundreds of pages that you can go through but that is really probably the one thing for skeptics to look at wow yeah you know this is this is this is pretty cool <laughs> and well, it's sort of magic you know what i mean like people yeah, don't understand how it works but it does work 
Well, <clears throat> that's a, such a beautiful story. And um, what I did for a moment, I don't, I don't know if you saw it on your end, but I pulled up your website, which reminds me, um, for those of you that are, are just listening, um, obviously go to the YouTube uh, episode so you can visualize some of the things we're about to talk about now. Um, but I wanted to share my screen with Philip's website, which is Leela.com. And Lila, that's yeah, LeelaQ.com. Thank you. Yeah, LeelaQ.com. So I'm here now. And what I pulled up was at first, so, you know, the Leela Quantum Tech, and, and this is sort of the research tab. And for those of you that are not familiar with the dark field uh, microscopy, microscopy uh, this is where we're showing, I'm showing this on the screen now. The dark field microscopy. Um, this is what he was talking about with the um, the Bessa Institute, and also here is the water structure study, which I think we covered this on a previous episode in which we talked about various things. Because um, on Simply Walk the Talk, we talk about all kinds of stuff in biohacking, especially um, I'm a huge fan of pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, um, which which I kind of find to be interesting, and maybe you can touch on this, but um, when it comes to a lot of this esoteric stuff, I was happy to experience pulse centers, PEMF. Um, and the reason why I like to talk about this in terms of the that tangible effect that is needed for some people to really go, oh, okay. Um, the power within the products at pulse centers um, it's it's so tangible that you you like if you're laying on one of their beds or their chairs or you have a pad or the rings like you can physically feel this this energy pulsing through your body and like I've been nursing a knee injury and I literally have been using my rings with the pulse centers device every single day and what's powerful about that is that you can actually feel it but I will say it's expensive it's it's really expensive like my unit is $15,000 for their sort of entry level device. And yes, it works. I know it works. I hear it. I feel it. Um, and my recovery is like, is, is cut in half almost. Right. But before I was able to get one of those, I had the units that you didn't quite feel. You could maybe hear it. You could feel some static. If you had your headphones on, you could kind of hear the static maybe. Or if I had, um, if I had turned on one of those devices and we were doing this podcast, you'd be able to hear it through the podcast, through the microphone. Um, but you almost had to just believe that it was doing something. And even though it's not quite as expensive as the Pulse Centers unit, you know, they still carry a heavy price tag for something that you just kind of hope is working. So I bring this up because sometimes you can go into seeing the studies like you showed like I showed on your on your website and like the the dark field microscopy is really cool because um, I've seen this in various other studies in which the the platelets they start very kind of scattered around and um, and you called it um, the the blood light what do you call it light blood L testing? life life blood analysis so because life you look at you look at blood really that's life like how it's moving yes. and you can Look at it with a video, and then you can you know, take images of the little blood cells. It's a dark field microscope. That means the the blood cells are illuminated in a way so you can actually see them. And certainly, yeah. they're you know you can see them because it's a microscope, and you can take pictures. And then you know it's a, it's actually a very widely used um, mm -hmm. method in Europe. It's very widely used, and um, I heard some crazy stories here about the U.S. Why in the U.S. it's not so so common uh, we don't have to go into that but it's uh it's, <laughs> it's an amazing method and you can see real physical effect and so if you see these so-called money rolls for example the the uh the blood clotting or the the blood cells hanging all on top of each other uh that that puts you at high risk for a heart attack heart disease stroke all these kinds of things and there's certain other aspects that you can look at you can even see when EMF is introduced that even white blood cells, for example, are sort of like paralyzed. And white blood cells is what you need. You need the motility and activity of the white blood cells for your immune system to respond fast, to be rapid, and to be very, you know, strong and, and get at stuff. 
and an EMF literally kind of like paralyzes those. And then, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an incredible picture and in how that then, then, then looks. And then you can see um, how it, how it changes. Yeah. That's, that's lifeblood analysis. Yeah. So I'm, again, I'm going to share my screen just to specifically talk about that part that you're talking about, because the visual of it is really cool. And I think regardless of if you are a skeptic or not, you cannot help but uh, understand it, especially when you have like a before, which here on the far left uh, on my screen, I've got the before and then I've got the after. And it's, it's a clear difference. <laughs> Regardless if, if you don't know what you're looking at, you see that there's a clear difference. And I think that's enough to get people to ask questions because every time there's a question, there's an opportunity to educate, hopefully. Um, and so I think that part of it is really cool. I'm glad you have this on your site um, because then the hope is that people go, okay, well, uh, let me look a little bit deeper. And then you got you know, as I'm showing here, the water study. Um, but like, let's let's go into, because you've talked about the product, right? And I wanted to kind of touch on that earlier. I assume when you're talking about the product, you're talking about the block. Is that right? Is that the first one? Yeah. So we have done tests for literally every every product. There's there's a study for, for literally almost, almost anything there, but the quantum block and the infinity block. And that's the also very unique things, the thing about, how we how we do this is this is pretty much the extension of our own technology that we've developed so we give that away to people in a decentralized way and not in a centralized way so the old world business model would have been oh you have this amazing technology that can do all these things and you can make products with that you keep it for yourself and never let anybody see it or touch it and you just make products with it and all that we went the completely opposite route to say, hey, no, I mean, we want any everybody to have access to that. And we found a mechanism how it cannot be manipulated or used for negative purposes. Uh, that was kind of the, the breakthrough in order for us to really make it available. And so, so that technology um, you can have. Um, and it can do all these amazing things. It's very simple to use, but it has a lot of different use cases. And just one tenth of it really is that it neutralizes and harmonizes literally all EMF that you're around. You can just put it in your home and then you know, you don't even need to do anything with the device. It just does it for uh, for yourself. But, but that's just one tenth of what it does. So it there's so much more to it. Um, you can copy any and all frequency. You can imprint pure quantum energy into any object that you want you know you can have your silverware put it in and i tell you you'll have a difference you know you take take your pendant that you have or a ring and and you'll put that object into much higher vibration and then it transmits some uh, pure quantum energy afterwards that's something you can do you can put your hands in there for example and this the dark field microscopy study that we just referred to that that was actually putting the hands in uh, to see the results relatively quickly. If you're just in the field, don't put your hands in there. It all takes longer. It still works uh, the whole time. But that's pretty much what you can do. There's other things you can do with it too. But we make products with that technology. So for example, we have a water bottle. And so that water bottle that was also tested by the Moto Institute is charged with pure quantum energy. It has a stainless steel double wall and, and metal holds quantum energy very, very well and transmits it also well. So it's charged with that. And on top of that, we charge it with certain healing frequencies and with the molecular frequencies of the most important vitamins and minerals uh, and organic plant extracts that the human body needs. So that as a frequency is included in that. And if you put your water in there, it literally charges the water with that. And then you, when you drink it, you just have a life water, really structured water that's super, super good for your body. And uh, don't go to the Mississippi River and fill up your <laughs> water bottle there because you want to use filtered water because it doesn't filter out uh, anything. So just use that. Um, and yeah, so we create these frequencies together with the healers that I mentioned, which is sort of the other part of our business, right? One is the quantum energy device and technology, really. And then the other part is the frequencies. 
So we notice mm -hmm. there are certain use cases, right? You know, people have anxiety or panic attacks, things like that. It's very common. So we created the so-called inner peace frequency, and it's it's delivered as a, as a card. It's a golden card, not mm -hmm. out of gold, unfortunately. <laughs> I feel a little bit expensive. Not but yet. It looks <laughs> golden at least, and it's like this big, like a, a credit card, pretty much. And so if you hold it or have it in your pocket, that frequency is available to your whole system. And that one is actually this inner peace card is one that most people actually feel pretty instantly because it helps you to access this space of inner peace within you, you know, that anybody has that at all times. It's just like when we're in anxiety or stress or, or panic, that space gets so small and almost inaccessible. And then we're in this, cramp mode almost energetically right and so that helps you to kind of help calm the mind to balance you and to expand from within and in a totally natural way and it and it helps to to train us that way also that over time we have it easier again to access this type of you know uh, feeling uh, at all times ourselves so and then you know there's certain other you know frequencies like one example that came out of the community was they asked us, can you do something for weight loss? We're like, uh, oh, you know, <laughs> we really didn't think about doing something for weight loss, but you know, people asked and we're like, okay, let's do it. Let's create that. And then, then we created it and tested that with them. And, and I want to mention that before I forget it, because we, we do have a community uh, and, and there's a telegram user group. It's a private user group, but I'll share the link with you for your listeners in case anybody's interested. So you can join. Okay. It's uh, over 2,400 members now uh, of people that are using these products. So besides the fact that you can get real life testimonials and experiences that are shared there at all times, I mean, you can ask questions, um, people also try things because our, our technology is, it's so cutting edge that there's so much still to explore. So you, people literally like tink things. So they, you can like, make your own frequencies with it and you can you can try this you can try that and it's just so much that is happening and it's working as a community like we're all like discovering more things sharing things and helping other people new people can come in and, and ask questions and other members answer and that's like this yeah it, it just it's an amazing group of people and and i feel like i'm really part of that community like i it's that that's how i feel yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely want to just make sure so that people listening, especially like if maybe they didn't catch us earlier when I when I um, alluded to what I'm about to say now. But, um, you know, when you mentioned the EMF neutralization, a lot of people think of that as EMF blocking. And the only true way to block EMF, assuming that that's beneficial, but the only way to truly block uh, EMFs is to do something like a Faraday cage, right? Or some kind of like copper material or, um, or, or silver, some kind of precious metal, right? Um, and there are times for that, but, you know, I guess correct me if I'm wrong, or maybe you can touch on it a little bit more so people understand it. When you're talking about allowing this to be an EMF neutralization, it's not blocking EMFs, correct? Yeah, so we do that too. So we do have uh, several clothing items like a quantum jacket and a, and a t-shirt and a hat and a cap and things like that that are made with high purity silver fabric that indeed block over 99.9% .9 of EMF. There's literally, it's complete blocking. But all the other products I mentioned indeed do not block EMF they neutralize and harmonize it. And, and why is that important, first of all? Because you know, if you have one of those devices at, at, at your home, for example, you, you, you still wanna use your Wi-Fi, right? I mean, if you wanna <laughs> want to watch a video, stream something, uh, do emails, you, ha you, know, you, you wanna use it. Um, so, and you may not wanna wear like a coat the whole time to block everything. So we found a way, because these frequencies are out there and as they hit our system, which can be proven by dark field microscopy and tons of other ways, they have an impact on our system. And it's, it's, it's harmful to most people, not, not to everybody. I would say there's maybe 
one to five percent of the people that are very tuned in have a very expanded consciousness are very healthy that you know on, on them it doesn't have such a such a negative effect but to most people so with the quantum block for example or infinity block if you have it at home or you wear this capsule that we have as well it does pretty much the same thing if you're on the go it creates a field that harmonizes these frequencies right and emf those are frequencies they're just frequencies that are not good it's like drinking bad water right so our technology on an energetic level changes that transforms it into a frequency into energy that is not harmful to the body it's actually kind of supportive actually then at that point and and that's how it works and then yeah that's what the studies prove that it does exactly that and it does that in a hundred percent of the cases it's not just some like random thing um that's that's the harmonization or neutralization part of it and you could you know if you had a, a block like that for example you could take your cell phone and charge it in the block and again i, I don't want to say you have then a healing device in your pocket but you certainly don't have a device in your pocket anymore that that blast you with um, with frequencies that are that are harmful to you. Wow, yeah, yeah it's it's a very powerful <laughs> statement, and um, and thanks for explaining that because, like, I I, I imagine that there's going to be some people that will take this and you know kind of like wearing tin foil hats and cover their bodies, but we have to understand that these. EMFs and, and non-native EMFs out there around the world, um, they are going to be here and probably get worse and worse and worse over time. So there's got to be some allowance of at least understanding that we can become more resilient. And I think as, as this world changes, we need to also learn to adapt. And there's a few tools like what, you're, what you've created that will allow our bodies to adapt and not be so negatively affected. Um, and so you did point out earlier, and I think it's, it's great to mention again, there are beneficial or native EMFs and there's non-native EMFs, right? And so the goal here sounds like how to optimize yourself so that you aren't as affected so that you can just keep crushing life, right? <laughs> um, exactly. And, and by the way, the, the, the capsule you're talking about, that looked really, really cool. I, I showed that in the example when I had the screen up, that looks so cool. So it, it sounds like that's a couple beads inside of a capsule. I guess those beads would have been charged previously. Yes, we'll have to send you one. So just send me your oh, shipping address because you, you definitely need to have one. So uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a brass capsule and uh, it's charged with the same frequencies that I mentioned that are also in that water bottle. You know, there's uh, certain healing frequencies and then those molecular frequencies of minerals and vitamins. And then it has these uh, titanium beads inside that are just charged with pure quantum energy. And, and they boost out these frequencies so that they're, you can envision almost a field of two, three meters in, in radius um, so that your system has these frequencies and this, this energy uh, available uh, as a support. And it, it does several things, obviously. So it, it, the vitamins and the mineral frequencies actually help with the bioavailability of any and all um, vitamins that you then intake through nutrition supplements or your regular food. It's it's quite amazing. And there, there's actually a group of people, it's a smaller group, but they can actually completely reduce the amount of, of supplements they take. We don't recommend that, but, uh, but you know, you have lots of people out there that try things then and they're like, I mean, I had this guy with thyroid things and he he always had to take all these different supplements and now he doesn't take any of those anymore. Um, so that can definitely happen. Sorry, my, sorry for okay. the noise here to everybody. My AirPods oh, no, no. fell out of my ear. <laughs> it's back in. It sounds um, perfect. And, and yeah, so, and it, it also neutralizes and harmonizes EMF. So that's something for when you're outside, you know, when you're in your car, when you go shopping. It's just you have that field always with with you, basically. And you see a lot of people actually wear this. Like Luke Story wears this uh, like a whole lot. And, you know, there's just a lot of people. It's 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 cool. It's kind of cool looking and it, it feels good. And, it you know, you don't really have to worry when you're, you know, do your grocery shopping and stuff like that. 
Amazing. Okay, I, I know we are going to have to wrap up soon, but I wanted to ask one quick question and then we'll go to our final two questions. Um, so with everything you just said in terms of like the wearables, but even also the block and things like that, um, how long is it expected for those to continue having that effect? And also what are things that may um, destroy that effect? You know, like can you wear the capsule through the TSA, um, you know, the screening and things like that? Great questions. Yeah. So you can pretty much say forever. So, you know, I would say a, several hundred years, you know, we, we can't really prove forever, but several hundred years for certain that energy, whether it's a card, whether it's a capsule, this energy does not leave uh, unless purposely done, which usually no one can do. Like we have a method on how to do that. So, so we could, but it's, uh, it, it's usually not possible. Uh, you would literally have to destroy the material. So like this water bottle, like at some point, every water bottle will wear down, right? Or you, you put it in the dishwasher a few times and it doesn't look that great anymore. It's still the energy will still be there, but at some point you may want to replace it because, you know, uh, you want to have a new looking one. So it's really the energy stays the same with the quantum block and infinity block. It stays uh, pretty much forever. And yeah, there's, there's no recharging needed uh, uh, ever, which, you know, and so people are pretty self sufficient. And then we have this concept, you know, the infinity block, you can buy it as a package. And the idea is not, you know, buy, buy two and it's cheaper that way, right? That's a side effect. But the, the concept really is if you have physically two of these, you can upgrade these devices endlessly. As long as you want, you can basically increase the concentration of this quantum energy field inside the block um, as often as you want. You have to be mindful with that because you don't want to create a too strong field too quickly. That's just a caveat. But people, know that and we we tell people but that's that's a possibility amazing thank you <laughs> um okay so the most people who listen to my show know that i ask two questions for every guest it's just another way to get to know you a little bit better and uh that first question is what is your top two pet peeves what is something that gets under your skin yeah and it can be from any any domain does not have to be about your work or or whatever Okay, so it's there's two levels always. There's there's one thing that's one aspect where it's okay, you know, everything is fine and everything is sort of needed in the world, right? But then there's this human level where indeed certain things are bothersome. And one thing is, you know, this purposeful lying of people in power um, that are not really trying to serve the greater good. Um, that is one thing that certainly is quite frustrating. Uh, the more you can see through everything and see that the, you know, it's on one end, you're like, okay, it's part of the game, right? It's part of it. It's, you know, the, for the transformation in the world, this is sort of needed also as, as sad as it is, but it's frustrating and it's, uh, yeah, sometimes it, it really bothers me. And the other thing, um i would say is related to that it's um it's people that are stuck in their little box and can't get out of it at all and don't even try to open their minds in between and, and those are the people usually that actually resonate very well with those people that come up with all these different lies and all of that and try to even defend those lies not knowing at all what they're doing and um yeah you, you see that certainly all over the place it's very sad and it's, uh, um, yeah, you know, it, so I, I would just, and, and you see it in science too. Like you see some amazing scientists that are open-minded and hey, what is science about? Science is about observation and then validation and then verification and all that. Um, and if you don't understand something, that doesn't mean it doesn't work or or something like that, or that you, you you should put it off or something. No, it should be like, if you don't understand it, just go figure it out. Like, how does it work? What does it do? And all that, like this curiosity that you have and, and open-mindedness, like um, scientists that I and Mitchell have and others, that is amazing. But if what is hindering to 
the progress of humanity is really this quote unquote scientists that live in this little box and always look at the same four corners and don't allow for anything that's outside of that box. And that's fiction in a lot of cases, actually. And that is something that I also think is kind of off putting. <laughs> right. <clears throat> yes. Well, you know, it's interesting because one of those things that kind of comes up in, in terms of the, the science and the scientist and what they need and what they don't need. And they say, you know, if, if you can't verify it, it doesn't mean it exists. And one of those things that comes up all the time is love, right? Like we, we can't, we, many of us have hopefully have experienced love, but you can't quite put your finger on it. Right. Um, but just because you can't quite put your finger on it or just because you can't attach it to a study doesn't mean that, a, that you didn't feel it. And this is what I, I, I hope people can really take away from this, if nothing else, which is, hey, just because you don't see it or or or, or you know, have the data for it doesn't mean that it doesn't work. So just just relax, people. OK, <clears throat> and moving on and speaking of love, something I like to also ask people when they come onto the show is uh, what is something you're most grateful for? Well, I'm grateful for my family and my kids. And I'm grateful that my path was the way it was. And I, I struggled with it uh, in between quite a bit, I must say, because, you know, especially during the time where, you know, I met my wife and all that. And even before that, when I started this journey of, you know, trying to remove my inner blockages and really try to break through uh, to this inner world, I figured, oh, my. And I met so many people that were like seeing things that I couldn't see or you know they got through blockages maybe faster than I did and all that and it was frustrating to me and I and I and I couldn't see energies and others could and then with my wife that was crazy because she could see it all and I I was there <laughs> and and it was so frustrating and um and then also you know in life certainly everybody encounters challenges and difficulties and all that that you go through and while you're in it it's hard but looking back, all of that shaped me and all of that helped me. And I'm grateful in the end that I was able to experience also to having forgotten myself because I feel now that I know how that is, I, I can feel how it is for most of the people out there. And that drives me now because I, I can, I can help some people. Well, this, th thank you again for that. Thank you for, everything that you've, you've done, um, for, you know, coming onto the show, talking with me, this, this gratitude question ends up being most of the time, the favorite part of the show for me, because, um, I like to also express my gratitude for your time and for all the things you've done with your company and explaining your journey. And I really look forward to all of the things in the future with, uh, with you and with the company. And we'll finish by, by allowing listeners um, to, to find ways to get to know more about you and the company. So uh, wh how can, yeah, with that, how can people find out more about you and the company? Well, so one is the website, certainly that, that you mentioned lilaq.com. And then the telegram group is, is probably a really, really great way to listen in and learn a little bit more. And people can even get in touch with me there because I'm active in that group, not as active as I as I would like to, just because my time is limited. But I, I try to be active, and there's a function in Telegram. If you click on, you know, this icon, my icon there, then you can even private message me, and I respond to every message. It's uh, I used to say it it may take a day or two. Now it may take three or four days actually <laughs> to get back, but I do get back at least. So I I, I do promise that. So I'll I'll respond, and. Uh, yeah, but thankfully, there's a lot of other people out there, a lot of other people now that know our products and how they work, they can answer questions too. Okay. And are you guys on social media as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have an Instagram account. That's our main social media account, you know, besides the Telegram group, which is not public. And we're on Facebook. I think we're on Twitter. Uh, I don't know why we're on Twitter still, to be honest. Um, we may change that, but <laughs> Instagram is really probably the, the channel to follow then. Yeah. And please and do so. Yeah, I'll I'll link to all of that, and I, I would assume that's Leela Q on on uh, Instagram. Is that right? I think it's at Leela Quantum. Leela Quantum. Quantum. 
Okay. Yeah. So yes, I, I will link to all of that. I will also link to the Telegram group once you send that to me. Um, and we'll put all the links for, you know, ways to get your own products to look into this more. Also, um, we had talked about possibly doing some cool, um, like discounts or, or, or something. Um, so to all the listeners, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, and Mr. Philip, thank you for your time again. And, uh, let's stay in touch and keep spreading the good word, man. And, and the, and the, the good energy. <laughs> Thanks so much, Josh, for having me. It was a pleasure to speak with you. And thanks yes. to the audience for listening. Thank you. Walk the talk, talking facts. Move like me, but I move a little fast. Make my move, here to last. Fast in these seatbelts, I'm coming past. Take care of me, longevity. Hack my biology, better believe. Walk in the talk, so my and body connected. Better come give us a listen. Better come give us a minute or two. Open the box up, we giving you tools. Giving your engine the fuel that it needs. Breathing into it, it's autoimmune. Make a connection, we're stronger than two. Making us one of a kind of a few. Work on the mind, but show me your moves. If you do what you say, you know what to do. Yeah. Simply walk the talk.